Celiac Disease Introduction Celiac disease, also known as celiac sprue or gluten insensitive enteropathy, is a chronic immune mediated disorder of the digestive tract, triggered by the ingestion of gluten containing substances. To be precise, there's an inability to tolerate gliadin, a 33 amino acid, which is an alcohol soluble fraction of gluten. Once gliadin is ingested, an immunologically mediated inflammatory response is generated in genetically predisposed population, which results in damage to the mucosa of small intestines. This damage causes malabsorption and maldigestion in patients. Gluten is a protein commonly found in wheat, barley, rye, and oats. Among these products, oats are comparatively tolerable by most patients. More than 99% of individuals with celiac disease have HLA, DR3, DQ2, and or DR4, DQ8, compared with 30-40% to 40 of the general population of most countries. By these associations, celiac disease has been linked with other immune-mediated illnesses, like Sjogren syndrome, type 1 diabetes, etc. Celiac disease is also associated with neurological disorders like ataxia, depression, epilepsy, Down syndrome, and Turner syndrome. Celiac disease shows a bimodal age distribution, first at 8 to 12 months, and second in the third to fourth decade. It affects females slightly more than males in the adult population, whereas in children, males and females are affected equally. Intake of gluten in the first three months of life and pregnancy in the third decade is associated with an increase in the risk of developing celiac disease. Etiopathogenesis Celiac disease has a very strong hereditary component. Its prevalence in first-degree relatives is nearly 10%, and concordance in monozygotic twins approaches 75%. Celiac disease occurs in 5-12% to of children with Down syndrome. There is an important role of environmental factors as well. For example, many patients of celiac disease have reported a previous infection with adenovirus 12. The protein complex of this virus shows homology to alpha gliadin. Also, celiac disease is more seen in whites of European ancestry. Gliadin fraction of gluten is resistant to gastric, pancreatic, and small intestinal enzymes. Upon intake, it is deaminated by tissue transglutaminase, and the deaminated gliadin is then able to bind to heterodimers of HLA-DQ2 and HLA-DQ8, which are present on antigen-presenting cells of lamina propria of intestines. This binding leads to activation of macrophages, CD8 T cells, and CD4 T cells, which further release cytokines. CD4 T cell activation leads to the release of abnormal antibodies, like antibodies to tissue transglutaminase, antibodies against deaminated gliadin, and anti endomycial antibodies. The deaminated gliadin also induces epithelial cells to release interleukin 15, which is known to stimulate and cause the proliferation of CD8 intraepithelial lymphocytes. Their cytotoxic action damages more enterocytes, allowing further movement of gliadin peptides, which get deamidated and bind to HLA, resulting in continuous vicious cycle brought about in this disease. Clinical Features Most pediatric cases present with classic symptoms of irritability, abdominal distension, anorexia, failure to thrive, weight loss, or muscle wasting. Extensive diarrhea can lead to severe dehydration electrolyte depletion, and metabolic acidosis. Adults most commonly present between ages 30 to 60 years old. Usually, adults have an atypical presentation, due to which most cases remain undiagnosed. It can present as a silent celiac disease that shows positive serology and villous atrophy without symptoms, or latent celiac disease that has positive serology, but both symptoms and villous atrophy is absent. In the adult population, this disease predominantly presents with diarrhea, in which stools might be watery or semi-formed, light-colored, oily, and frothy with a characteristic foul odor. Other features include fatigue, flatulence, steatorrhea, weight loss, 
and abdominal cramps. Classical gastrointestinal symptoms in children. Classically, celiac disease presented between 6 and 24 months of age after the introduction of gluten into the diet. The children have chronic diarrhea, anorexia, abdominal distension, and pain, and failure to thrive or weight loss. Some may also have vomiting. If the diagnosis is delayed, children may present with signs of severe malnutrition, flatulence, and abdominal distension caused by colonic bacterial digestion of malabsorbed nutrients are common. Extraintestinal features seen in celiac disease. Anemia, caused by impaired iron or folate absorption. This anemia is resistant to oral therapy. Bleeding diathesis, due to impaired vitamin K absorption. Hypoalbuminemia, leading to edema. Hyposplenism has been seen due to recurrent infections. Neurological symptoms develop due to hypocalcemia. Epileptic disorders are only slightly more common among children with celiac disease. Delayed puberty, infertility, and miscarriages. Dermatitis herpetiformis. Dermatitis herpetiformis is common among adults and children with celiac disease. The classic clinical finding in dermatitis herpetiformis is the development of multiple intensely puritic palpules and vesicles that occur in grouped herpetiform arrangements. The elbows, dorsal forearms, knees, scalp, back, and buttocks are among the most common sites for lesion development. Metabolic Bone Disorders Metabolic bone disease is common in celiac disease in both adults and children and can occur in patients without gastrointestinal symptoms. Patients with celiac disease may have bone loss due to secondary hyperparathyroidism from vitamin D deficiency. Pathology Biopsies are usually taken from the second part of the duodenum. Histologic features of celiac disease in the small intestine range from a mild alteration characterized only by increased intraepithelial lymphocytes to a severely atrophic mucosa with complete loss of villi, enhanced epithelial apoptosis, and crypt hyperplasia. Modified Marsh classification of histological findings is used to grade celiac disease. In Marsh type 0, intraepithelial lymphocytes per 100 enterocytes duodenum is less than 30. Crypt hyperplasia is normal. Villi is normal. In Marsh type 1, Intraepithelial lymphocytes per 100 enterocytes duodenum is greater than 30. Crypt hyperplasia is normal. Villi is normal. In Marsh type 2, intraepithelial lymphocytes per 100 enterocytes duodenum is greater than 30. Crypt hyperplasia is increased. Villi is normal. In Marsh type 3A, intraepithelial lymphocytes per 100 enterocytes duodenum is greater than 30. Crypt hyperplasia is increased, villi is mild atrophy. In Marsh type 3b, intraepithelial lymphocytes per 100 enterocytes duodenum is greater than 30. Crypt hyperplasia is increased, villi is marked atrophy. In Marsh type 3c, intraepithelial lymphocytes per 100 enterocytes duodenum is greater than 30. Crypt hyperplasia is increased, villi is complete atrophy. Diagnosis Histological evidence with positive serology confirms the diagnosis of celiac disease. Immunoglobulin A transglutaminase is the most sensitive serological test and the first step for diagnosis of celiac disease. This test is highly sensitive, specific, and more cost-effective than other antibody tests. Anti-endomycial antibodies Testing for anti-endomycial antibodies is as accurate as tissue transglutaminase immunoglobulin A, but this test is more expensive and somewhat dependent on operator interpretation. As a result, anti-endomycial antibodies are typically used as a second-line test to clarify the diagnosis. The amidated gliadin peptide. It also has good diagnostic accuracy and may be particularly useful for young children. This is a second-generation anti-gliadin antibody test. If the serological tests are inconclusive, total serum immunoglobulin A must be checked 
If that is normal, one can rule out celiac disease. Intestinal biopsy. Individuals with positive tissue transglutaminase immunoglobulin A or anti-endomycial antibodies should undergo an intestinal biopsy to establish the diagnosis of celiac disease. The gold standard investigatory finding is the reinstitution of bili after eliminating gluten from the diet. A gluten-free diet should not be initiated prior to serologic testing for celiac disease because these tests may be falsely negative if performed while on a gluten-free diet. Celiac Disease Diagnostic Testing Algorithm If there is a high probability, greater than 5%, perform duodenal biopsy or tissue transglutaminase immunoglobulin A. Both negative, then celiac disease is unlikely. Both positive, then confirm the celiac disease. Biopsy or serology disagreement Perform HLA-DQ2 and DQ8 genotyping. Measure IgA level with or without tissue transglutaminase or deaminated gliadin peptide immunoglobulin G. Work up for other causes of villus atrophy. If there is a low probability, less than 5%, tissue transglutaminase immunoglobulin A with or without immunoglobulin A level, positive tissue transglutaminase, Perform duodenal biopsy. Negative tissue transglutaminase or low immunoglobulin A. Perform tissue transglutaminase immunoglobulin G with or without the amidate gliadin peptide immunoglobulin G. Any positive, perform duodenal biopsy. All negative, celiac disease unlikely. Children younger than 2 years. For children younger than 2 years, tissue transglutaminase immunoglobulin A is the best initial screening test for immunoglobulin A sufficient children. Total immunoglobulin A should be measured concurrently to exclude immunoglobulin A deficiency. If the tissue transglutaminase immunoglobulin A is negative and there's a high clinical suspicion for celiac disease, or if the patient is immunoglobulin A deficient, the latest recommendation suggests sequential testing with deaminated gliadin peptide, immunoglobulin G, to detect a few patients with positive deaminated gliadin peptide, immunoglobulin G, but normal tissue transglutaminase, immunoglobulin A. Treatment The majority of patients with celiac disease respond to a gluten-free diet. Potential celiac disease Potential celiac disease refers to patients who have positive serologic tests for celiac disease tissue transglutaminase, immunoglobulin A antibodies, or endomycial antibodies but have normal small bowel biopsy. A gluten-free diet is not necessary for such patients if they are asymptomatic. However, it is important to ensure that the evaluation included multiple intestinal biopsies since histologic abnormalities can be patchy. These patients should be carefully monitored for growth failure and other symptoms that might suggest active celiac disease and they should be re-biopsied if symptoms develop. Pneumococcal vaccination. Celiac disease is associated with hyposplenism. Therefore, prophylactic administration of pneumococcal vaccine is recommended. Complication. Patients with untreated celiac disease are at increased risk for lymphoma and gastrointestinal cancer. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.